uh, you won the P Nobel Peace Prize in 1984 yeah. uh, for your fight against apartheid. Uh, how did that change your life? Fantastic. You know, <laughs> before I won the Nobel Peace Prize, I was trying to get people to listen. I said, you know, we, we want you to apply economic sanctions, and they wouldn't listen. I wanted to meet with President Reagan. He didn't want to meet me before 1984, <laughs> October, <laughs> and then they announced here in Oslo, Desmond Tutu has won the Nobel. <laughs> And then, then, how long did it take before Ronald Reagan called you? I didn't. I. I, I was. I didn't even care to talk to him. <laughs> and, and, and they. And he said, "Please come." But you see, and this is serious. The Nobel Peace Prize is an incredible thing. The things that I said before I know I I received the Nobel Peace Prize. People didn't listen. I got the Nobel Peace Prize. I said the same things. And they said, ooh, ooh, ooh. He, oh, he's an oracle. I mean. <laughs> it was very, very important because it helped to focus attention on the situation in our country. And it told the apartheid government, watch it. The world is watching. And it gave encouragement to our people. It's a fantastic, fantastic thing. Uh, you, you don't know just what an incredible thing you have here in Norway. You are extremely inspiring, and you're so optimistic. Does it ever happen that you lose hope? You know, when things like the conflict in Kenya, yeah. uh, do you ever lose hope? I'm not, I'm not an optimist. No, 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 I'm not an optimist. I am a prisoner of hope. You see, you know that this world is a moral universe that right and wrong matter. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Ultimately, goodness will prevail. You say, no, man. Well, you say, let's just look at some of them. Hitler. Hitler. There was a time when Hitler was the boss and everybody was scared of him. Where is he now? <laughs> Mussolini, Stalin. I mean, we suffered under apartheid. Our apartheid rulers, there was a time when it actually did look as if they were invincible. Where are they now? <laughs> huh? Huh? Where are they? They all bite the dust. They all bite the dust, ultimately. It may take a long time, and yeah, there's a lot of suffering. But in the end, in the end, good will prevail. And I, I say that, first of all, because of my faith, and second, because of what history says, the verdict of history. If we talk about uh, nowadays, there, there's never been such interest uh, for the primary election in, in the United States. Uh, and how much time do you spend following the elections? <laughs> yes. Well, I, uh, I'm obviously following them. But Barack Obama visited uh, us in South Africa. And recently, when I was in Kenya, you know, he telephoned and said, uh, if there is anything that I think he might be able to do, as you know, his father who is a Kenyan or was a Kenyan. Uh, and maybe as a black person, 
I, 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 I hope he will, he will really make it. But it is, it's actually incredible. I've been getting reports from many Americans, white Americans, who are saying, this man is exciting us. This man is filling us with hope that things can be different, which is fantastic. Uh, and so what happens there is not just domestic politics. Well, of course, I mean, America is the, the only superpower. So whoever is in the White House is going to be important. But it's more important than that even. It is important because I think in many parts of the world, people are longing. If it is not Obama, the first black, then Hillary, the first woman, you know her as well? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yes, 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 yes. So, yes. <laughs> I've, so, got to, I've, I've got to try to be, you, I mean, can you imagine when I say, well, you know, the other day when I was in the Oval Office. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Father Desmond Tutu. Thank you so much.